Good day, beloved, and welcome to this video. Uh, we are in the in our series called Love, the Greatest Force in the Universe, and we will continue with the slides. And this is probably going to be the last one, and probably a bit longer than the rest. Not sure. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so uh, this passage we went through extensively. Uh, the last uh, the last video so we will go to the following the following one the next one love builds up another we already I think the coin fell already and we understand this but let's read Romans 15 verse 1 2 now we this is a one that's repeated eh? now we the able that means the ones with stronger faith ought to look at this very important we ought to be bearing the and infirmities infirmities of the impotent and not to be pleasing ourselves think about that juicy piece of meat remember not to be pleasing ourselves let each of us please his associate for his good toward his edification so in order to uh, um, in order to uh, prevent any misunderstanding let me put, let me say this never please someone else at the expense of the evangel that shouldn't be done not one iota or tittle if we please people we please people at the expense of ourselves out of love again love has priority always all right so now we are going to go to a well-known passage and uh, maybe straighten up some misunderstandings let's go the fruit of the spirit yes you heard me correctly and you read it correctly i will repeat the fruit singular of the spirit is love period yep period there are no nine fruits of the spirit there is one fruit of the spirit and that is love period and that love that fruit has eight components eight being the number of new beginning new creation let's read you you know them already joy peace patience peace was uh, also used in the love chapter remember patience also patient no sorry it was patient and kind that was used in the love chapter so peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness and that's also faith also faith so faithfulness very important one meekness faithfulness is very much underrated that's what i think anyway meekness and not self-control that sounds so new agey i i rather use the word restraint restraint self-control is like you control yourself you're your go your your own god you know things like that uh, uh no i i rather use restraint so eight components of love joy peace i'm going to repeat it y you know what it means joy is that lasting joy you know that right it's not happiness today and sad tomorrow no it's the lasting joy which is which is a foundation in our life meaning even if we are sad tomorrow we have that joy as a foundation and that is joy rooted and grounded in love that means that it never fades 
Why? Because you have a huge expectation as an example. So you are always joyful because you know what's coming. Peace, same thing. Always peace. Even if you are worried sometimes, you put it, you lay it at God's feet and uh, His peace will garrison in you and you know how that works in Philippians 4 verse 6. So, patience. That's also a good one in terms of endurance. Patience. Kindness to one another. Yeah, that asks something of you sometime. Goodness, same thing. Faithfulness, oh, I love this one. Because people who are faithful are so rare, so rare nowadays, that keep on doing and surfing. They keep on doing and they keep on going on. That's faithfulness. Wow. Meekness. And restraint. A big one here. Here of course. In terms of when you are in sense. Or you, you want to become in sense. You use restraint. To not become incensed. To, to not fall in a trap. The, this passage is. Of course, found in Galatians 5, verse 22 to 23, you know that. So let's go now to some uh, repetitions. Oh, first this one, sorry, I forgot. The love of Christ is always toward completeness, always. Love is a trait of completeness, of course. Maturity, completeness. Now, being true, in love we should be making all grow into him who is the head, namely Christ. Ephesians 4.15 And for, uh, chapter 3, verse 17 through 19 says, Christ to dwell in your hearts through faith that you having been rooted and grounded in love, should be strong to grasp together with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ as well which transcends knowledge that you may be completed for the entire complement of God. Wow. Wow. I mean, okay, let's go. Um, this we know. In love we should be making, we are to make all grow into him. It's, it is in love that's automatically him who is, the, who is the head, Christ. Of course. And this one. It talks about being rooted and grounded in love, which is so such a truth if you are rooted and grounded in love and that applies to all of us of course then we are at the right place that's the only place that counts that the, that's the only place that will last being rooted and grounded in love well you having been having been rooted and grounded in love should be strong to grasp together with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ. Let's leave it here. And let's ask you, what do you notice? What do you notice? If scripture talks about the breadth and length and depth and height, what do you notice? How many dimensions do we know as humans on this earth? We know one time dimension, 
and three space dimensions right so what do we read here the breadth and length and depth and height we're talking four spatial dimensions have you seen that before this is awesome this is fantastic and this is just a foretaste i believe Ju just a foretaste of what we will be um, seeing and observing later when we are snatched away whoa <laughs> whoa then we're talking at least 11 dimensions whatever category they fit in 11 uh, in the universe scientists say that there are 10 dimensions and um, it looks that that is correct but christ is from another level above the universe so it's at least 11 dimensions we're talking about so think about it it's fantastic and also to should be strong to grasp what is this to love to know the love of christ and then it says the love of christ which transcends knowledge we know that already hopefully that you may be completed again that love that completes the entire complement of god what does that mean because what is the what is the entire complement of god what is that that is in first instance christ meaning head and body but then ultimately what is the entire complement of god again christ but everyone being vivified in christ sharing my view here think about it i think that's the case also pursuant to first corinthians 15 verse 22 so now we're going to the repetitions so again just to uh, reiterate the the underlying principles i'm going to go through this quickly the law of leverage is so important to understand how unconditional love works so first you push the short side downwards that is the pain of discipline investing in time money uh, energy and then automatically the long side goes upwards that is the yield the results the beneficial results in the long term so that is also the underlying principles first shorter pain of discipline then the long-term yield of lots of fruit and if you want to avoid that that's also a possibility if you want to have it easy in the short term no pain okay then you will suffer long-term regret and that is much more pain like i said a hundredfold more pain and also this schedule so don't forget the confrontation matrix when religion and truth confronts when they collide so to speak be aware of how this principle works if you are afraid and you keep let's say you are in the religion and you keep your religion because you are afraid you look at the short term because you think no i don't want to lose my reputation my friends my income my power no 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 but what you also will lose is the uh, you so you will retain then the short-term benefits but you will lose the long-term benefits let me put it easy if you choose truth then it will be the other way around obviously you will lose in the short term and i'm talking out out of my own experience i was booted out of church so to speak 
I was uh, I lo- I lost most of my friends. Income is not applicable to me because I was not part of the leadership and power also not in that sense. So, but what I receive is Ionian life. That's what I will receive. Oh my goodness, not even comparable. So there will no judgment for me be for me, but blessing. And even I will be a judge as well. So blessings, e- e- fantastic bliss. So think about it and uh, remember the confrontation matrix. So I think it will not be long after all. So because we are going to the end now. Love is always according to God's intention because his very intention is driven by love his very intention so you may not be ashamed then of the testimony of our Lord nor yet of me his prisoner that's also very important but suffer evil with the evangel in accord with the power of God who saves us and calls us with a holy calling not in accord with our acts but in accord with his own purpose and the grace which is given to us in Christ Jesus before even before times Ionian 2 Timothy 1 verse 8 and 9 so again uh, let me start. Let me start uh, at the top. It's interesting because if you have a an associate, right, and he is in prison because he was condemned by his government for something he allegedly uh, did, because they want him in prison because of his uh, evangel. It is thinkable that you as the person outside of prison will be ashamed of him or her if someone asks you where is paul and you say uh, ah, uh, uh, sorry but he's in prison like you are ashamed to say it it's quite uh, thinkable right it's quite recognizable in that sense that's why paul says to to timothy suffer evil with the evangel in accord with the power of god because that's the evangel and also mentioning the fact that god not only saves us and calls us but he does it in accord with his own purpose not our acts and he says in accord with the grace remember the highest expression of unconditional law, a love, in accord with the grace which is given to us even before not only the disruption of the world, but before times Ionian even started. That's earlier. And that was given to us in Christ Jesus. So, of course, God's plan was already designed and was already uh, uh, designed and, and, and filled into a T before it was even put uh, 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 into motion. This is one huge of a privilege before times Ionian even. So... Let's remember that God, uh, that love is the tie of maturity. Let's read Col- uh, Colossians 1, 3, 4, uh, 13 and chapter 3, verse 14. Let's read. We are thanking the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, always praying concerning you on hearing of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have for all the saints. It's fantastic 
for Paul to hear about these things and thanking the Lord and Father of his Lord Jesus and our Lord Jesus Christ. Also this part, it's God who rescues us out of the jurisdiction of darkness and transports us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Wow! And don't forget that we are part of that as, a, as, a, as the body of Christ. We are part of that. The Son of His love. Because Christ in that sense is the Son of His love. Wow! That's what I mean by privilege. We are hugely privileged. Now, and I'm going to end uh, the video with the next slide. Let's read this one. Now over all these put on love, which is the tie of maturity. That is the very um, power or force that ties maturity so hopefully now we truly understand and the coin has fallen and it hit us that love truly accomplishes its goal through everything it will conquer everything that's why it is the greatest and most purposeful force in the universe. I thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.